Hi, I'm Lisa Lashes and uh, you are here at the DJ School, Lisa Lashes School of Music that um, created in August 2018 with my business partner, Deborah Hewitt. So uh, basically, a little bit about me, I'm, um, I've been a DJ for, oh my goodness, like 25 years now. Um, well, less than that, I've just aged myself a little bit there. 25 years or so, um, I've been around the world, I've been had the amazing accolade of number one female DJ in the world for quite a few years now, which is amazing. Um, and I suppose that enables me to now kind of um, be doing the creative industry that I'm doing now, which is um, teaching young people, vulnerable people most of the time, um, uh, how to do music, how to have dreams, inspiration and uh, want to travel the world and uh, have a little bit of experience of what I've done in my life. So um, yeah, and that's um, why the Lee Slasher School of Music is now alive. So um, I suppose the reason, um, so basically I started um, looking at doing a workshop for under 18s um, just because there was nothing out there. There's no, um, you know, there's no workshops, there's no kind of youth clubs, there's nothing in the area that I was in, in Leicester. And uh, I kind of wanted to test the water and see how I could go into my hometown of Leicester City Centre and see how I could help some under 18s, um, and which I did. Um, and that was on the May the 19th, 2018, stuck in my memory completely because that's where I met my business partner, Deborah, um, and she was part uh, education background and funding, which I was doing the workshops for free. Um, it, you know, just gathering my friends in bringing their equipment in, some vinyl over there, some decks over there, Roland UK over there, Pioneer over there, and uh, I'm giving some uh, people that are probably less fortunate than other children, um, you know, a chance of seeing what it's like in the creative industry, in the music industry. Um, I mean, it's an expensive game. At the end of the day, you can't afford to buy all the equipment. Um, I was trying to get some free equipment from different merchandise, from different people, uh, Pioneer and different things, which thankfully they have uh, helped us out along the way. Um, what, you know, I, the layers that have built from doing that workshop is um, pretty intense and amazing because it was nothing like I've ever expected kind of didn't know which way I wanted to go when we were doing these workshops until Deborah gave me a direction. Um, I knew I wanted to do something in the nighttime industry because of um, the lack of clubs, the clubs closing down, people not going out, the social life of people, there's nothing for them to go to or be around and I was worried about that, like we're all living in a you know an online world and I think if that happens the whole what happens to the human race it just comes to a standstill doesn't it if you're not meeting people creative getting things out in your own mind kind of thing so um, yeah so I suppose I wanted to build a community of people like-minded people that were fun creative maybe didn't fit into the real kind of school um, and a lot of them we did had found that they were excluded from school so um, yeah I think music and education, when it comes together, is pretty huge. So um, basically, I know as being a DJ and a musician around the world that um, music is a, you know, a universal language. Um, that was something that was prominent when we brought brought our first Serve people together. So Serve is the community initiative for um, violence, um, and by the Northamptonshire police with Daryl Lyons, an amazing initiative, we have like 18 navigators come in, bring in people that are vulnerable to us, um, we put them through functional skills, uh, one and two, um, upskill them, handhold them to local colleges and stuff, and the reason we knew that music is so powerful and people just forget everything when, um, you know, the creativeness is flowing is um, when we had like sort of rival gang members coming in to the school, we put them into the studio, a mic each with each of them, got them to, well they say wraps and bars, whatever it is, MC Whisker doesn't help me out with that one, um, I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, so, you know, they're just sharing a microphone and little did we know that they're, they're in rival gangs and just the power of music is, has brought them together in a room together and they're making music and sharing the same air and oxygen and stuff like that, you know, something they would, would not be able to do in the streets. So um, I know music just breaks down those barriers for them to be able to um, forget what, what the outside world is doing, be a child if they want to be, be a grown up if they want to be, come into a creative area and um, make music together. And I think that's just really powerful. 
for um, the community as a whole, really. So um, just the way the music um, can reach people's lives in a way that you don't actually understand what they're going through. Uh, we have, you know, coming into the school, we have such a diverse amount of students that, I mean, we have people going through uh, gender reassignment, we have people, um, care homes, uh, youth services, been in prison, stuff like that. We don't, we don't care about where they come from. We just want them to know that they can come in here and whether they want to sing at the top of their voice, rap, do this, do that. We just, that all we ask them is to leave the gang references and stuff like that out of um, the music that they write. But only because we tell them, like, if you're, if you're making a track, and you're doing all these gang references, then you're then stopping your other members who are in that um, that track from going any further. So we kind of like, it's a little bit like, I suppose, democracy, isn't it? Do you want it to be like that? Do you want it to be underground? We teach them in a way that they don't realise we, we are teaching them these um, British values. Um, and just, I don't know, I suppose, making them better people through music. And um, we also find that music is a massive therapy. So when we've dissected, when we've got them recording in the studio, then we dissect the lyrics to get them to write it out. When they write it out, some of them break down and kind of, they've never seen their life in uh, in a song before, but a lot of them are. Um, and uh, it's kind of like for them, it's like a release as well. Um, for me, that's amazing to see because I can see them bit by bit pulling off those little tiny layers, chipping away at those layers and, and 12 weeks after they've been with us at the school, there uh, there's a massive transition from week one to week 12, and uh, that gets me up at five in the morning and makes me come here every day. <laughs>